Welcome, everyone, to the PFF Fantasy Podcast IDP Edition. I'm John Macri, and we are now less than one week away from week one kickoff. So it's bold prediction time. We're talking dark horse candidates who are going outside the top 10 positional ADP, according to the IDPshow.com. And, you know, who we think have the best shot to kind of finish as their leading, the leading scores at their respective IDP positions. I've got the most tremendous presence helping me get spicy with it. But the question is, will either of us have the sand to list Troy Reader as our Dark Horse LB1? Only one way to find out. So let's get it. All right, this is going to be a fun one. Like I said at the top, I'm not alone for this episode, but I am joined by a tremendous presence, the number one dynasty ranker on the idpshow.com, universally beloved, great hearts, and not to mention easy on the eyes. The one and only Adam Markham is here. Addy, what's up, man? Man, all true things. So true. Yeah, it, it is he. It is I. I am uh, <laughs> very happy to be here. Always a pleasure to chop it up with you, talk ball. And uh, yeah, we get football in a week, dude. It's crazy. It's crazy. A week. Like, and you just filled me in on the fact that there's going to be a Friday game. Our wives are going to be very angry. Yeah. But uh, that is going to be an all time weekend. It's going to be great. Uh, and like just an awesome week one slate. Um, I know, you know, we, we've had the preseason, but we don't have to like fully pay attention to the preseason. Right. So like you said, the wives are a little bit more forgiving in that time, but it's all about kind of prepping them that, you know, the season is coming and then we're probably going to disappear for a little while. Um, and yet the NFL loves to dominate every single day of the calendar. So why not give us a Friday night game? Uh, Packers Eagles. I, I don't know. I can't remember exactly where it is. Um, but uh, it'll be one of those like international type games. And yeah, it'll be fun, man. This is, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get into all the week one stuff uh, probably next week. But this week, I know, you know, we're leading into the biggest draft weekend of the year for fantasy drafts. A lot of people save their fantasy drafts for this weekend and Labor Day weekend and all that kind of stuff. So um, this is kind of our last really look at, you know, draft type prep before the season. So. Um, like I said at the top, it's dark horse candidates to finish as the the leading scorers at their position. So, um, you know, essentially the concept here is that, you know, every year players kind of come out of nowhere to deliver huge fantasy season, especially in IDP leagues, you know, given kind of the relative instability of, of NFL defenses and, and all of that stuff. So naturally, we decided to take a swing on who we think um, those players might be this year. Uh, making this more difficult, we're looking at players who are being drafted at least outside of the top 10 according to the ADP which is collected by the IDP show.com um, I had written this up as an article last year with the mild success not not much I, I think Josh Allen was really the only one that um, came close to delivering for me I think he was being drafted as like edge 15 at the time he finished as edge 5 for us um, Cameron Curl did better than his ADP as well but there yeah there was other ones like Drake Greenlaw Kyler Gordon um, Leonard Williams but you know the point isn't necessarily to expect like an overall number one finish but more so for players who should greatly exceed their adp and get close closer to that range so uh, i'm looking forward to this adam I, I, we got a pretty good list here um excited to get into it uh, I, i'm glad that you guys have been collecting this adp all season long so you feeling pretty good about the, about your picks here i think so i think so i've, I've done a lot of drafting this off season i've done over 20 uh drafts that have nice. involved idps so yeah, I feel like I've got a pretty good handle on on the market and and where guys are going and who the values are and uh, yeah, lots of targets that I that I, I get consistently in all these drafts and we'll talk about a lot of those guys tonight. Yeah, this is going to be good. And then yeah, you mentioned it. Um, you know, a lot of those drafts, the uh, IDP best balls and things like that. We're going to reference a lot of the ADP that's been collected by those um, by those best ball drafts. Again, collected by the lovely folks at the idpshow.com. And we'll get into our first pick uh, in just a second. But first, a word from our friends at DraftKings. Uh, we had the appetizer last week. Now it's time to feast. College football is back. Don't miss any of the action. Jump in at DraftKings Sportsbook. It's a full slate of games for Week One, including the 
the big matchup in Atlanta between the preseason number one and number 16. And it's the number one place to bet touchdowns. DraftKings currently has the most touchdown markets offered and leads in touchdown futures and season specials. Touchdowns can be scored on the ground, through the air, or a defensive effort. Any of those methods can result in a winning bet. This is going to be DraftKings' biggest college football season to date. Enjoy the ride now all the way through the expanded playoffs. Plus, all newbies get into the college spirit. Here's something extra special. New DraftKings customers can bet $5 to get $250 in bonus bets instantly. Score big with DraftKings all college football season long. Download your Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use code PFF. That's code PFF for new customers get to get $250 in bonus bets when you bet just 5 bucks. Only on DraftKings. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER in New York. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in Connecticut. Help is available, available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort. Uh, Kansas, 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expired 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash ftball. All right. Let's start off with the edge position um, where sacks typically play a a massive part in fantasy success, but tackles should not be overlooked here either, right? Especially in leagues with more balanced scoring where both things do tend to matter. Now, what I've liked to do kind of for each position when trying to find like these dark horse candidates to lead their position in IDP scoring heading into the year is kind of look back at what the past top scores at their position from previous years have done. So, um, for the edge position, that's been TJ Watt in 2023, Max Crosby in 2022, TJ Watt again in 2021. So for all three instances, we've had Watt and Crosby hit double-digit sacks, um, that much kind of typically obvious. Um, they've also delivered over 34 QB hits in each year. And then as far as tackle production, they've finished among the top 12 at their position in total tackles each year, with Max Crosby even leading the position in 2022. Now, to get those strong sack totals, we often do need like strong, stable pass rush metrics to bank on. And in the case of our past three edge ones, they finished no worse than sixth in expected sacks. They were top 10 in PFF pass rush grade and were at least well above average in terms of win rate and pressure rate. So with all that in mind, Adam, I'll let you go first with your dark horse pick going um, beyond the top 10 in IDP show ADP who you think has the best shot to surprise this season and push for that dark horse edge one finish. I'm going to go with a a guy by the name of Demarcus Lawrence, a throwback here, Macri going as edge 51 DL 70. That's 133.7 overall in these IDP only best ball drafts. We've done this off season. So 91.0 overall PFF grade in 2023. That was eighth best among edge rushers, 11.9% pressure rate very much in line with his career rate of 12.3 percent 14.3 percent pass rush win rate that was 22nd best among 54 qualifying edge rushers Dorrance armstrong dante fowler both gone sam williams lost for the year with a torn acl so that edge rotation in dallas razor thin so volume should not be concerned for d-law he just, just got to stay healthy that's that's been a, a common thing with d-law he's got to stay healthy but it can happen also like the fact that this is a contract year for DeMarcus. Um, he should be motivated to get himself maybe a few more bags. I doubt he gets much long term, you know, but I could definitely see this guy getting like a lot of like one year, ten to fifteen million dollar like mercenary type deals. So I on our show I've 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 said that if I had to pick this year's Clil Mac, it'd be Demarcus Lawrence, a guy that's, you know, basically been left for dead, struggled a little bit with health lately, sack numbers began to dip. Eight and a half in 2019, nine in 2020, six in 2021, eight in 2022. Uh, but then Khalil Mack goes off for for 20 uh, for for 17 in in 2023. So I'm not saying we get 17 sacks out of Demarcus Lawrence, but would not be surprised if we see him get somewhere in that 11 to 13 sack range. You know, with a top 12 finish for us uh, in IDP. Yeah, I I mean I love the pick. I, I love the the. Uh, the similarities to like what you like what you said with Khalil Mack there because it kind of it it really is similar like these are both you know kind of older edge defenders heading into whatever it was like I think year 11 for Mack I think Demarcus Lawrence heading into year 11 this year so you know 
whether the Cowboys actually play him in like a volume heavy role, I, I'm with you. I feel like they've been kind of depleted at the edge position, right? No, like you said, no Sam Williams, no Dante Fowler, no Darrance Armstrong. They did draft Marshawn Nealon, but that's pretty much it. Like that's really going to play that role. Like I, I think, you know, for him, he hasn't played over 700 snaps in, in a few seasons now getting up over that 700 snap range is, is kind of the goal, right? Um, the other two times that he did that in his career, which was 27, eight, 2017 and 2018, were, there were also the only times in his career that he had at least double-digit sacks in the regular season as well, right? So if he can get up into that 700 um, snap range, we know like he has really strong pass rush metrics um, like you laid out and a really good run defender and tackler as well. Like, I, you know, he, he's been kind of slept on because of the low sack totals recently but all the past pass rush metrics kind of say that you know he's elite right and if, if he can deliver on those expected totals now as well as what he's doing as a tackler like I, I think that makes a big difference in you know his potential to i mean that adp is is super low right so he can greatly exceed that number even if it's not edge one finish technically like it, there's a lot of value to kind of make up for where he's being drafted right now. So yeah, I love the D law pick. Yeah. That's the bigger point, right? Maybe top 12 is a stretch, but like, this is a guy you should not leave your draft without, you know, especially when you're able to get him edge 51. That's just silly. But yeah, Demarcus Lawrence, I have 50% exposure to him. So I've gotten him in every, in in half these drafts that I've done this off season. So highest drafted uh, edge edge rushers is Demarcus Lawrence for me. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's the thing. Like we call this, you know, episode the Dark Horse IDP ones or whatever for for each position. But really, we're mostly looking for them to just greatly exceed their their ADP. Right. Like that's kind of the main thing here. And I mean, Demarcus Lawrence, like Khalil Mack has been like a 900 snap player almost every year of his career. Demarcus Lawrence has never exceeded, I think, 736 in the regular season. If he were to be like a 900 snap player, which I mean, I would be out of the the ordinary for him, then really could be like an edge one season when you consider the pass rush metrics and the tackle numbers. But I'm, I'm with you. I, I expect more kind of just over that 700 range and then just kind of exceeding his his ADP. Um, all right. So my pick for Dark Horse Edge One, uh, it's, it's a player I've talked about. Uh, a, a lot this offseason, so not much of a surprise here, but I'm actually going with TJ Watt's teammate, uh, Alex Highsmith. So, again, you know, TJ Watt has finished as the edge one the, the past two of the past three years. So, choosing his teammate, you know, maybe makes this a little bit more of a risky bet as far as finishing first overall. But again, we're, we're basically looking for him to finish well within that top 10, I think, um, because he's going outside that that range for sure in ADP. He is being drafted as, let me see, edge 19 right now. So, um, I, I think I have him as a top 12 edge in my rankings. Um, the main thing here for for Alex Highsmith, which I've talked about a lot, is that the Steelers deploy both Watt and Highsmith at a really high rate, um, both on run and pass downs. Um, each player played over 900 defensive snaps for over an 80% snap share last year. For Highsmith, that that's allowed him to deliver really strong tackle numbers, 57 tackles in at least 57 tackles in each of the past three seasons he's finished no worse than top 20 at his position in that regard and then over the past three years combined he's accumulated the third most total tackles at his position since 2021 with 193 so watt and highsmith obviously playing together you know watt's going to get a lot of sacks himself but that also has its potential advantages for highsmith um highsmith created five sacks with his initial pressure last season three of those were converted by tj watt um however tj watt created six sacks with his initial pressures last season but highsmith somehow didn't benefit from any of them um which again i think a number that can easily bounce back here in 2024 when you have tj watt on the field that that he's not going to benefit from zero sacks uh, uh created from tj watt again he also had two sacks negated by penalty last year alex highsmith which was um the second most uh, among the among all players last season 
Um, but yeah, like 2022, we saw what he's capable of, right? He delivered an overall edge 10 season thanks to 12 sacks. Um, but last year it was just seven sacks, um, despite hitting new career highs in his pass rush grade with an 86.2 career high and win rate, 18.1% career high and pressure rate, 14.6%. Uh, and then most importantly, expected sacks rank was 11th. So th- this tells me, or it tells us, I guess a lot about a player's potential for this season than just just his previous sack totals and for high Smith specifically with most of those numbers, basically representing top 12 marks at his position. I think it says that he can get back to delivering double digit sacks again this season. And that combination of playing time, tackle production, potential for double digit sacks just makes him kind of the, the clear candidate for me, at least for, for somebody that can be an edge one um, that's going outside that top 10 and ADP. Yeah. I love it, man. He, he is such an awesome player. Definitely an asset you want in IDP. Um, and 14 and a half sacks in 2022. 14.7 points per game in big three scoring. That was 14th best among all defensive linemen. So, yeah, man, he's a stud. Unbelievable situation around him, too. You know, great players. Cam Hayward, Keanu Benton, Nick Hambig. I mean, fun team, fun defense. Well coached, of course. So, yeah, I, I expect him to have a, a big bounce back. Won't be surprised at all if he finishes top 12. Yeah, I, I got to imagine um, he's going to push for it as long as he stays healthy, right? Uh, he's just, again, these workhorse edges with that level of pass rush metrics, they, you know, they're just so valuable for for IDP. So um, love me some Highsmith this year. What do you think about but, him big? I like him too. I, he was he was a really fun player coming out of college too, like uh, Wisconsin, I think it was, right? But mm-hmm. like undersized player, so I don't know that he's got like the workhorse potential of like a Highsmith and, and TJ Watt, like especially for rundowns and stuff like that. But his pass rush metrics were great coming out of college, right? I, I know there was talks about him potentially moving to like off ball linebacker at the time, but fit right in as an edge and looks good. Like I, I think he's somebody that they can deploy at least on like obvious passing downs get all three of them out there but um yeah i do like uh, i do like uh nick herbig yeah nick herbig as well because they got yeah, nick herbig tough. as well I've, yeah <laughs> I've messed it up. him and within spin um but i mean and he also had just like the massive upside if something were to happen to tj Watt, oh, yeah. which it seems you know that does happen every once in a while every every other year it seems so yeah yeah i mean him big is like a, an actual like league winning type potentially if he were to get his opportunity for something like that. Yeah. If there's, yeah, if there's ever an injury to like an Alex Highsmith or or a TJ Watt, like that's priority kind of, you know, waiver wire ad, right? Like he should be like when you're doing your IDPs, that would be definitely be the, the, the top one for me, like even more so than whoever the linebacker of the week is um, that week is, it's just, like you said, the defense and everything about it, like, and those pass rush metrics from him, like it just makes a lot of sense that he could step in there and be, very effective. And I know your audience is hip to, to Herm big, but um, <laughs> get out there and check your waiver wires. Cause there's still yeah. a chance that he could be out yeah. there. And, you know, once he does kind of bust out in season, like there's it's the secret's going to be out. You're not gonna be able to get him. Yeah. So get him now while you can, if you have, you know, if you're in these big, big deep leagues, you know, 50 plus man rosters, he yeah. needs to be on your team. Yeah. Yeah. There's not many like obvious, like, edge defender waiver wire claims in season like the guys that are going to come in and replace the starters because they just don't do as well um, because it's a position that relies so much on talent but um, yeah Nick Herbig definitely um, or him big uh, however you want to say it I mean people might be calling him him big now so uh, <laughs> people are starting to say it and use it people it's are saying on. It, yeah it's, it's in the streets now so if he gets out there it becomes a, a re- IDP regular he would definitely be uh, be getting new nicknames all over the place so <laughs> Uh, let's move to the uh, the other defensive line position, the interior defenders, uh, known as the defensive tackles on our IDP platforms. And we'll start quickly with the makeup of kind of what created our past DT ones, which includes uh, Derek Brown last year, Christian Wilkins um, in 2022, and Cam Hayward in 2021. Uh, a lot of similarities with the edge position, of course, but also some differences as well. One of the main differences being, um, at least in my preferred scoring, being that sacks weren't nearly as important. And, and this is common for defensive tackles anyways, who make up the large you know, majority of their fantasy points through tackles. It was about 75 to 80% um, of their fantasy points come from tackles where edges are between like 60 to 65% um, of fantasy points from tackles. So 
You'll see um, that only Cam Hayward really came even close to double digit sacks in 2021, while Christian Wilkins and Derek Brown were each below four. Uh, so that means that a lot of what we're going to be looking for has a lot to do with tackles and playing time, but pass rush metrics um, and things like that are definitely an added bonus and can get you there if needed. Um, but all three of these past DT ones played more than an 80% snap share. They dominated in tackles versus expected as well and saw at least 12 points per game come from their tackle numbers. Um, but with all this in mind, as well as the ADP requirements, um, I went with Jonathan Allen of the Washington Commanders. So Allen is coming off a DT 11 finish in 2023 um, in, in the PFF scoring that we're using, even with it, you know, being a relatively down season in terms of like tackle and sack production for him. Like last year was the first year since his rookie season when he only played like five games that he didn't record at least 60 tackles and have five and a half sacks. Um, so those, those, that was the lowest mark of his past three seasons was the five and a half sacks. Sorry. Um, and then you consider his pass rush metrics, playing time, history of racking up tackles. I, I think there's reason for optimism that he can at least bounce back, deliver a stronger IDP season than his DT11 finish in 2023 and where he's currently being drafted as, which I should have said was DT13 um, right now in terms of ADP. But he recently had, you know, has been one of the better pass rushers at his position. He's quietly posted top 10 pass rush grades um, in three straight seasons from 2020 to 2022, but he really kind of dropped off last year, kind of an uncharacteristic drop in performance across the board. Career lows in run defense, 37.9 grade. Uh, overall grade was 59.7, but I think he's the kind of player that can benefit here from a fresh start with Dan Quinn coming in as the new head coach who just coordinated the Dallas Cowboys defense toward a top five pressure total in the league last season um but for allen his pass rush metrics still provide i think the most encouragement he ranked 10th uh in win rate last season at the position 18th in pass rush grade uh, and that's kind of where he ended up getting into the top 12 and expected sacks for his position along with just the the elite playing time as well which i think should all continue kind of into 2024 here so with the playing time, with the tackle production, I, I think, you know, if that could bounce back to closer to his career norm and then it just delivering on the sacks, he, I think he has that potential to kind of get to that overall DT one or at least, you know, within range of that uh, by the end of the year. Yeah, I love it. Just going to be forever underrated, Jonathan yeah. Allen. Um, and then I think he was just uninspired last year. If I remember right, he had some like hilarious quotes, like where he was just fed up. <laughs> with that team you know yeah. and it makes sense i mean that guy's been there been good and his entire career is a really really good player came from alabama and you got to go put up with the dysfunction of washington so things have kind of turned around for him i think maybe like the first time in his career you know yeah. things are actually looking up you got a quarterback that could be pretty good and then you got uh uh you know dan quinn in there that, that's defensive minded and and uh should help his production i think um so yeah I, I love that pick that's a good one yeah that's what i'm hoping right i'm hoping you know if, if this washington team is is actually good too like that that could make a huge difference in like you said just his overall morale and and you know feeling toward the team because it, it was a really big drop off from his career norm last season so um hoping for better things uh this year for jonathan allen uh but you got a fun one here um who do you have as your dt dark horse one um for 2024 i'm gonna go with Kalaja cansey Going as DL58, that's defensive tackle 17. That's 110.9 overall. But he's usually someone that will linger around if you're, you know, you also got to keep in mind, these drafts are like full of, of people that are drafting like all mm -hmm. offseason. So these pretty knowledgeable draft rooms. So like in, in the IDP Madness, it's a lot more scattered as far as like skill set. And uh, he's lingering around to like the 15th, 16th round. So I think he can wait on this guy, but... Yeah, Kalijah Cansey, stud in college, put up 34 TFL, 16 sacks in 37 games at Pittsburgh. Also, from a PFF standpoint, awesome. 91.8 overall defensive grade his final year at Pitts, uh, Pittsburgh. 91.8. Um, 92.4 pass rush grade, 47 pressures on 275 pass rush snaps. That was a 17% pressure rate. Uh, and then 2021, 84.6 overall PFF grade. 2020 was 80.4 PFF grade. So um, 
just really good numbers from a PFF standpoint. 9.6 RAS, that's a relative athletic score. It kind of measures how much of an athlete somebody is um, uh, relative to their size. So love to see that. Everything you want in a prospect. So this led to the Bucks taking Kansi 19th overall in the 2023 draft. And not the best season, you know, for the rookie. 26 tackles, 10 TFLs four sacks across 14 regular season games, 8.9% pressure rate, 46.6 overall PFF grade. I talk about this a lot on the show. You know, obviously huge fan PFF, uh, love pressures, love what it means, you know, as far as future pass rush production. However, when it comes to these young guys, these mm -hmm. first, second year players, I try not to panic, you know, early on. Yeah. It takes a little bit of time and they're, they're, they're playing a different game at this next level. If you look at, Guys like Jeffrey Simmons, 5% pressure rate as a rookie. Quinn Williams, 5.4% pressure rate as a rookie. Ed Oliver, 8.1% pressure rate as a rookie. If you want to look at edge rushers, uh, Jalen Phillips, 53.7 overall PFF grade, 9.7 pressure rate year one. Jonathan Grenard, 51.9 overall PFF, 5.3 uh, pressure rate year one. Max Crosby had a 9.3% pressure rate as a rookie. So it takes time. These guys don't come in as just ballers right away. So... I think that's kind of going to be the same thing for, for Kansi. I do expect him to have a really nice year two. And I think he has the upside of being a guy that like could get over 10 sacks in a season. Um, the PFF stuff will come. I, I I'm just, I, he, he's undersized. He's like six one two eighty. So, um, I think it, it is going to take him a little bit of time to develop, but I see no reason why, um, he can't start year two and, and be, be a much better asset for us and, and potentially be a type that, that can get, you know, eight, nine sacks potentially um, with the upside of eventually getting 10 in his career. So yeah, I love Clyde uh, If If anyone's selling, I, I'm, I'm buying. And uh, yeah, that ADP, I mean, that's, I'll, I'll take that all day for a guy with, with his upside. Yeah, no, this is a, this is a good call. And we talk about it all the time, right? Like just preaching, preaching patience with these defensive linemen, especially um, coming out of college, to, you know, regardless of how well they played in college, it's a completely different game in the NFL and it takes time. Right. But I'm with you. I, I like Kansi. I've been a fan of his pass rush potential coming out of pit as well. Like, Obviously, you know, the Aaron Donald comps were, were not really fair and, and only because he was like an undersized DT with pass rush skills and playing at pit, right? Like people got to stop with that kind of stuff. Like, it, you know, he, he's a really strong pass rusher, but I, I, I'm i with you. I do think he's better than what his rookie year numbers will tell you, like the 63.4 pass rush grade ranked 78th run defense was obviously atrocious that 29.8 ranked 161st at 164 qualifiers, but there were also some promising numbers in there as well that I think, you know, point to improvement too. Like if you look at, you know, say his quick pressure rate, 6.4% quick pressure rate. So that's pressures in two and a half seconds or less. That was a top 30 number for, for his position. His overall pressure rate was top 50. So I, I think like an improvement for him as a pass rusher definitely makes sense. I, I also, you know, don't know that he could be any worse as a run defender, right? Like he could only go up from here. It's, again, it's a first year thing. We got to preach patience and, and wait on it. But um, I, I, the only thing I guess that I worry about is just the opportunity to play more of those rundowns, right? And, and kind of rack up tackles because he's that undersized DT and because he kind of got pushed around a lot last year. They have Vita Vea, they have Greg Gaines who could kind of clog up the middle there. But so I don't know how often they'll get pulled off the field at like, on early downs for Kansi, but you know, the pass rush upside for him, I think is specifically the most interesting. And, and I think the, the thing that's going to get him into that DT one range more than anything else. And um, it, it, I'm with you. I, I think there's pass rush potential there that could get to double digit sacks. It could be this year. It could be next year, whatever it happens to be, but he has that potential in him. We saw it in college and uh, I I'm still definitely a believer in, in Kalijah Kansi. Um, all right, let's look at safety next. Um, yeah, definitely safety to me, one of the trickier positions, um, to kind of pin down because there's just so much turnover like year to year. Um, but there are still some scoring similarities that we can look at to try and help us find the next man up for 2024. Um, last year was Antoine Winfield Jr., Jalen Petrie in 2022 and Harrison Smith in 2021. 
all three of them posted at least 100 tackles, had a combination of some added big plays in there as well. It was like three picks and five sacks for Anton Winfield last year. Petrie had five picks to go along with like insane tackle numbers. Um, and then Harrison Smith just had like the perfect combination of like solos while also delivering three sacks um, and a pick as well, just barely edging out Derwin in 2021. But unfortunately, like predicting the big plays like interceptions and sacks is is really difficult and, and tends to be um, pretty unstable. So the focus for me at least kind of ends up having to be on like metrics that are slightly more stable. So tackles are kind of our best bet to try and project, project which can be helped by potential usage and, and alignment within the defense as well. Um, Winfield, Winfield and Petrie didn't necessarily play like a high rate of snaps close to the line of scrimmage, but they produced so much above average in either big plays or, or tackles that there are significant kind of outliers as well, which is always difficult to replicate. But that being said, um, Adam, you have, I think, a, a great pick here for the, the Dark Horse Safety one here. Why don't you tell us about, uh, about your guy? Yeah, as far as usage goes, he's probably not going to be uh, one of those guys that you, you target based mm -hmm. on usage. Because, I mean, you know, he played a ton of free safety, but I think he's just a ball player, Macri, you know? Yep. Some players, usage just does not matter for, and I think Reed Blankenship is one of those players. You line him up deep every play, and he's still probably going to lead your DB room in tackles. Um, so yeah, seventy-two percent of his snaps are free safety in twenty twenty-three. Still put up one hundred and thirteen tackles with eleven point nine percent tackle rate. Um, and then I, I'd like to just look at his stats from college. I always think you know it kind of tells you what a guy is if if they've been that their entire career. Um, chances are that's that's what they're going to continue to be. And Middle Tennessee State, dude, he was a baller. As a freshman, 13 games, he had 68 tackles, 7 TFLs, a sack, and 2 INTs. As a freshman, sophomore, he had 107 tackles, 8 TFLs, a sack, 4 INTs. Um, as, a, as a junior, he had, in 7 games, he had 58 tackles. Uh, as a senior, he had 76 tackles across 9 games. And then as a fifth-year senior, he had 13 – in 13 games, he had 110 tackles, 10 TFLs, and a sack, an INT, 9 PD. So I think he's telling us that he's pretty good. He knows how to tackle, and that equals good things in IDP. So, yeah, I love Reed Blankenship. And also, I mean, like, look what's in front of him. Like, you got <laughs> you got Devin White, 12.3% yeah. career missed tackle rate, never graded higher than a 519 uh, Zach Bond, 18.1% career <laughs> missed tackle rate. You have N'Kobe Dean, who has played 220 snaps in the league. So, I mean, there's a chance that he's going to be cleaning up a ton of missed tackles. And, uh, again, I just think, like, I'm not worried about the usage when it comes to him. I've, mm -hmm. I said the same thing about Antoine Winfield forever. As soon as he came into the league, did not care where he, where he lined up. The dude just knows how to make plays. Reed Blankenship, the same type. Yeah, this is a good shout out, right? I, I love the the Blankenship call because, like you said, I mean, the tackle numbers have consistently been amazing for him. Like he he dominated tackles versus expected last year, um, ranked in the ninety eighth percentile in that regard. Like I, I think he was a player that maybe a lot of people kind of started to pencil in as like replaceable after free agency in the draft, you know, because they brought back Chauncey Gardner Johnson. They drafted Cooper Dijon um, who had been rumored to move to safety at one point and, and was likely going to beat it. You know, wasn't likely going to beat out Quinion Mitchell for um, a corner spot who they drafted ahead of him. Drink James, Bradbury was moving to safety as well. So all this was kind of going on to try to figure out how to get them all on the field. And 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 I saw a few times where Blankenship was kind of the odd man out in that regard, probably because he is like a, a UDFA. But, you know, here's the thing. He's actually good, right? Like you just laid it out. Like, you know, his grades have been good too since he stepped in as a starter, has just quietly been one of kind of the pillars of that defense, which is a defense that's been losing a lot of those pieces like that in recent years, like TJ Edwards and Javon Hargrave and Alex Singleton and Fletcher Cox retired. Kevin Byard was a rental. Son Reddick. Like there's a solid list of starters that are just gone now, but they have some good options to replace them. And Blankenship has turned out to kind of be one of those guys. Like he was 
safety seven in points per game last year. Um, I, I like the potential for him to to get back there or potentially exceed that this year. Um, I, I got him as safety 15. I, I, my rankings are a lot of like um, – a lot of based on kind of potential alignment and stuff like that. But they're like you said, there's certain guys that I trust, you know, the production potential for a lot more than than others. And he's one of those guys like a Minka Fitzpatrick, like an Antoine Winfield Jr. that has moved up the rankings um, quite a bit uh, throughout the offseason. And yeah, now uh, he's he's in that range for sure for me. Yeah, he is going as DB 29 safety 22 Ooh, in wow. these, these drafts this offseason. So love that value i mean that's that's a that's a no-brainer right there if you can get this guy as your safety two, a back-end safety two, yeah it's very yes, nice please. and that's why you fade the position always because yeah. these guys you know some people are hesitant to trust you know some people don't look at the college production some people don't you know see that that's that's who this boy is yeah. you know he's gonna <laughs> he's gonna stuff this, the stat sheet he's gonna get in there and, and get tackles at a very high clip at a linebacker type clip you know so yeah yeah it, it, and look at the hair too it's like a crew cut <laughs> type like i mean that dude's got a huge neck look at right that picture <laughs> that we're looking at like, it's clean cut just seems like a you know just a good good guy you know just he looks like a tackler really. yeah probably has some like really like dark secrets though like oh i'm sure probably like, killed animals yeah. as a kid like. or something <laughs> you know yeah, that. let's put that out there. Bit. Let's put that out there for Reed Blankenship. I'm hearing Reed. Great What's going on, Reed? Doesn't like animals, yeah. You kind of got to have a little bit of that in you, though, I think, to, to be that type of guy. I think so, just so. to be an NFL player. I think it helps. I'm not upset crazy. about it, you know? No. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it helps you win your IDP leagues. You take what you could get. Sure. <laughs> All right, so uh, my pick is one that uh, if I was putting his name out there, maybe even as recently as like last offseason, I'd probably get a lot of shit for as like a dark horse pick. But I am going to go with Buda Baker of the Arizona Cardinals, who's being drafted as safety 17 right now. Um, obviously, Buda Baker, no stranger to like high end IDP production. Um, and again, wouldn't be considered a dark horse in the past, but really kind of a down year last year that dropped him in value he's now outside the top 15 at his position being drafted as safety 17 right now to me still checks like all the boxes to get back into contention as the idp like safety one um and a big reason for that is that he's still like a reed blankenship among the elite tacklers at the position where despite playing just 12 games last year um he ranked among the 90th percentile in tackles versus expected after ranking in the 98th percentile in 2022 so there's already like a, a significant box check there for for buddha baker now Last year, he missed time um, and and really fell on the wrong side of variance in terms of big plays, which ends up leading to pretty average numbers for those looking at like fat past fantasy points or something like that, which I've talked about before. It's not it's a poor overall like year to year indicator for IDP. It's just not as reliable as it is with offensive players. So this is one of the things that I keep coming back to with Baker and, and I think why he shouldn't be overlooked on top of like the excellent tackle production, but he only delivered one and a half percent of his total fantasy production from non tackle stats um, last year, which was by far the lowest mark among all safeties who had played at least a hundred defensive snaps. So for a player who plays as much and as well as Baker does, like that's a number that to me, it just bound to bounce back, just natural regression in it towards the the mean there at the very least. Um, it potentially a significant jump in, in the other way, it, you know, depending on on how things go for him. But you know, he also happens to play for for a defense that projects as the best usage for potential safety tackle production for when I did that defensive scheme projections article for for IDP safeties a couple months ago. Really a healthy season from Baker to me, like it doesn't require him to do too much else from what he's been doing in order to get back to being that IDP safety one and just getting a little luck in terms of like the, the big plays is, is really going to be the main thing for him. But uh, as far as like tackling goes there, he's still one of the very best um, in the league. So like uh, Buda Baker quite a bit, especially at, at his discounted price now. Yeah. I mean, this is the cheapest I think he's ever been, right? Yeah. But, you know, I, I feel like Buda Baker was also, like, in a weird spot last year in Arizona. I think there was, like, trade rumors yeah. that I was hearing, you know, like, the contract, I think, is maybe coming up. Or um, is, he's at that point where it's like, is he is he, is he he worth to have? You know, is he worth to pay all this money? We've seen a lot of these big-name safeties 
they got big contracts, Justin mm-hmm. Simmons, Kevin Byer, like, you know, they get cut. So that's kind of like, I think where Buddha right. is, but I, 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 I think that he, he could be a little bit rejuvenated in, in 2024. I mean, you know, Kyler's back. They got Marvin Harrison in the building now. Uh, Trey McBride's really, really good. Um, the defense is going to be absolute cheeks, you know? I mean, yeah. they, they've lost B.J. Ogilari, who, like, they actually could not afford to lose, which is crazy right. to say. But that's the state of the, the Cardinals' defense. So uh, very bad, very bad defense, very bad uh, team. But, yeah, Buda Baker stands out as far as talent. So should have all the opportunity. Again, I think that he's going to be a little reju- rejuvenated, uh, going to maybe take on, you know, that retake on that leadership role there. So, yeah, I would not be surprised if we see the big plays fall for him too. I think that happened to him early in his career, right? Like mm-hmm. it took him like a few years to get a, an interception and then a ton just, you know, started falling for him. So that's kind of how that stuff works, especially in IDP. Sometimes you just, you know, the ball doesn't bounce your way. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I, I'd expect that to turn around a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I think that makes perfect sense. He's definitely a player. Like I, I, I think it's a good kind of comparison, like with the Kevin Byers and, um, Justin Simmons players like that, right. That that may very well be free agents by next off season. Um, I think we're, you know, we're close enough to the season now this year that you see his roster spots nice and safe. We, we like that for him. Um, just got to stay healthy. I, I, again, it's also a defense that primarily plays like one linebacker as well. So um, there, there aren't those two full-time linebackers out there soaking up a lot of the tackles. So that leaves him open quite a bit, which I, I do like um, quite a bit about that defense. I was I'm looking at my uh, portfolio, dynasty-daddy.com. Nice. For you guys out there, if you're looking for a really good site with tons of just tools for your dynasty leagues, uh, 31% exposure. Very pleased with that. I didn't realize I drafted okay. that much Buda Baker. So, yeah, you got uh, 31%. Very happy with that. Um, and then, yeah, I'd say I was getting them, you know, around DB 20 to 25. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I'll take that all day. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Um, so we'll cheer him on together then. Um, Always cheering on Buddha, right? Um, I mean, he, he's 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 the best, and also like he gave you like some love on Twitter once, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. He sent me a DM, and I think he still follows me. I don't know. I haven't checked. Yeah, that, there you but... go. He follows. <laughs> Look how humble Macri is. Right. I think he does. Acts but like yeah, he, he did send know. he did send a nice message on a DM one time. So he's a friend of the show. Um, technically. Yeah, he is. Best uh, yeah. friend of the show. Good best guy. <laughs> Great guy, great guy. Uh, All right, let's take a quick uh, ad break here. Hey, everyone. We're just going to take a quick break to let you know that this episode of the PFF Fantasy Podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. In today's hectic world, it's easy to focus on everything except yourself and your own mental health. Sometimes you need a little help to help make sure that stays on track as well. Therapy can be really useful to get a better understanding of how your mind actually works and to become more aware of your own patterns of behavior and how to improve them. It's useful for everybody, not just people struggling with something specific. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. BetterHelp is a convenient, flexible, and entirely online way to get therapy that's right for you. You just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you could switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Never skip therapy day with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash PFF fantasy today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash PFF fantasy. All right. Like the true DGENs that we are, let's also include some dark horse CB1 picks and cornerback really kind of continues the trend um, set with the safeties in that the defensive back production continues to be like the most unstable year to year thanks to like just a high reliance on big plays for the top scores um however there are at least a few similarities that stand out um from these past two seasons that could help us or past three seasons i guess that could help us find the next cb1 um in idp so we're looking at deron bland from last year Legereus Sneed in 2022 and Kenny Moore in 2021. So both Sneed and Moore were the only corners to hit triple digit tackles in their respective CB1 seasons, um, at least using NFL tackle numbers, not the PFF ones. Um, both players also played well over a thousand defensive snaps in each of these seasons. Um, which is naturally just going to create opportunities for interceptions, pass breakups, tackles, all that kind of stuff. Um, 
The dip, the one outlier here, obviously, is last year's CB1, Deron Bland, did not hit 1,000 snaps. He had 964, uh, nor did he get 100 tackles, but he made up for that by setting an NFL record for the most pick sixes in a season, which is obviously going to help him and, and not something to try and chase. For IDP managers, it just makes him like an absolute freak outlier that isn't something anyone should bank on being repeatable. So that leaves us banking on a lot of like playing time for production, but also a bit on where that playing time comes from alignment wise as well. Um, two of the past three CB1 spent the majority of their snaps lined up in the slot and added a decent chunk of around 10 and a half percent of snaps in the box, which um, both help significantly for, for potential tackle production. Uh, again, Deron Bland, freak outlier. Um, ultimately kind of the high volume of snaps is going to create a high volume of targets, which leads to tackle opportunities on top of interceptions and pass breakup opportunities. So with that in mind, um, my dark horse CB one pick is Teron Johnson of the Buffalo bills. Now, very quickly, I, I will say that Johnson isn't technically like a true every down player. He does come off the field in certain sub packages, but he's still averaging close to 90% of his team's defensive snaps over the past three seasons with the large majority of those snaps coming in the slot or the box. Um, and that's been the main thing for me. The prime alignment has allowed Johnson to clear 90 total tackles in back to back seasons. He's ranked among the top 96th percentile in tackles versus expected um, in each of those years as well. He's got elite tackling ability combined with obviously opportunity. To me, one of the better options at the position, especially going beyond the top 10 in ADP, he's being drafted as CB14 right now. Um, he has delivered below average fantasy points from big plays slash non-tackles in each of the past two seasons, which we've mentioned this already a couple times throughout the episode, something that could spike and dip on any given season and full-time starters have a shot to benefit from that spike at any single point. Um, and Johnson is kind of due for one himself. 2023 was actually his first year without an interception since 2019 and his passes defense were down from 2022 as well. Usage on blitzes has allowed him to deliver at least one sack every year of his career, uh, except for 2022. Um, and then, yeah, just helping his potential further is that he's also getting targeted more than any Bills defender in each of the past two seasons, which, again, increasing his opportunities for tackles and big plays needed to, to potentially finish as that CB1. So Teron Johnson is my pick here, Adam. What do you think? Longtime fan. Guy's a freaking stud. I mean, yeah. look at his last four years. Tackle numbers. 2023, 98 tackles. 2022, 90. 2021, 76. 2020, 93. I mean... Dude is a is a baller, and then you watch Bills game, and he's uh, any Bills game, he's just constantly yeah. making plays. Um, and also, you know that that defensive back room. I mean, it's now without Jordan Poyer, a guy that's been a mainstay there for forever. So I mean, Teron Johnson really is the the veteran in the room, leader in the room. So yeah, I, th I think we could see Teron Johnson maybe have the best year of his career. But uh, big fan, love that dude for a long time. He he was uh, the reason I, I won a uh, we do an IDP playoff league well a playoff fantasy league that has idp in it and teron johnson was nice. definitely a reason i won one of those years so love him forever yeah yeah he's a fun player um definitely has a lot of idp potential still um as well as your pick here adam um you went with jalen ramsey of the miami dolphins as your pick tell us about him um as his dark horse potential yeah, going as DB51 or CB16. Pretty simple here for me. I think Ramsey is fully healthy now, and he will have a much better role than he did in 2023. Now that former defensive coordinator Vic Fangio is gone, 91% of Ramsey's snaps came at outside corner in 2023. That is way different than his usage in 2022 and 2021. But I also think there's kind of like a myth kind of about how Ramsey was used. Like, he wasn't exclusively playing the slot or in the box in L.A., mm -hmm. um, 67% of his snaps came at outside corner in 2022. 58% came at outside corner in 2021. So uh, in 2022, 20.1% came in the slot, 10% in the box, 2% on the defensive line. So that's 32% in the sweet spot, as we like to say. Finished as DB3, averaged 14.3 points per game. Uh, in 2021, it was 27% in the slot, 12% in the box, 2% on the defensive line. So that was 41% sweet spot usage. He was DB7 averaging 13.6 points per game. So we don't need him to mm -hmm. dominate the slot, but we need him to, you know, play like a third of his snaps there right. um, or in that area, just 
closer to the line of scrimmage, closer to where the action's happening. Because the dude's a baller, the dude's a playmaker. Um, but yeah, I mean, two straight years being a top 12 DB in 2021 and 2022, absolutely worth hitting the button at DB 51. Yeah, that's a that's a great price tag for him. And honestly, yeah, I'm with you. Like, I think just last year too, like he missed, I think, what, the first seven weeks of the year as well, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it was just the, the usage really just kept him out wide. So he just, you know, he had the snaps when he was out there, but like he was just so far away from the action that never really had a chance to put up any really good tackle numbers, which is what he's been doing in previous years. So we just want to see him sprinkled in a little bit more into the, some more of those prime alignments to get a little bit more involved in the game and, um, and see what we can get out of him. But yeah, still a really good player. We'll see what Anthony Weaver um, does with him. I, I think that's that, taken over as the the defensive coordinator there. I would not be surprised to see him um, bounce back at all uh, in, in 2024. I, I, I like that pick quite a bit. And he- Weaver was quoted this offseason saying that he needs to be used more in that way. So, I mean, nice. that, that gives me a little bit of hope that uh, that he will be. And, yeah, I mean, you know, a potential top 10 defensive back for you if yeah. if uh, if the stars align. So, love Jalen Ramsey. There was talk, you know, when he was doing that stuff in L.A. that, like, he could potentially transition to, like, a Charles Woodson type safety role as he ages, wow. you know. And I think he'd be, he'd be awesome, dude. Like, he, he's That'd a guy that, would, that could be around till he's 35, 36, you know playing at a very high level got that dog in him you know yeah definitely i want guys that. like that you want guys like that yeah right my, my other honorable mention here for cornerback was mike hilton another guy just nice. like a, oh, yeah. you want those types of, of players yeah yeah so. mike mike hilton's another great pick I, i've got a lot of mike hilton um in cp Sle- required leagues this year so too. slept on so yeah. slept on great tackler the uh the snaps just keep going up and up and up every yep. year so yeah he he's good and he's he's free i think he was like db80 so <laughs> yeah yeah so there's yeah there's plenty of value out there still and yeah ramsey's ramsey's a fun one i i, I know they're using cater kohu in the slot a little bit more but I, again we got a new defensive coordinator coming in here and like you said if they mentioned that you know talking about moving him around a little bit more than last year instead of just keeping him outside like that makes a huge difference in in his idp potential yeah. and again we don't need him you know we, we don't need like yeah. over 70 percent in the slot right. we just need like 30 yeah. percent and that's that's good that's all yep. we need absolutely um all right we made the people wait until the very end but let's get into the linebackers now adam um we know that opportunities and and tackles are king when it comes to fantasy linebacker production and that's represented by like nearly 85 percent of average linebacker fantasy production coming from tackles um which is more than any other idp position Uh, but this is important information for fantasy managers because it's not easy um you know to predict the who's going to be lb1 but predicting tackle rates is still at least slightly more stable than predicting like the non box score stats, like sacks, fumbles, interceptions, stuff like that. So, um, you know, adding to the fact that finding our next IDP LB one is easier said than done is that the same man has reigned Supreme for three straight seasons as LB one. Now won't relinquish his crown easily. Foye Aluakon has now delivered three straight LB one seasons doing so on two different teams while leading the league in total tackles in 2021 and 2022. In addition to leading the league in solo tackles in 2023, now um he's always had like a a handful of big plays to his big to to his box score to help him which is expected for most linebackers who play like over 1100 defensive snaps in a season whatever it was for him um but for the most part in order to get that like 17 plus points per game mark our future lb1 should at least be able to deliver 80 percent 80 percent of their fantasy production as a tackler with room for positive variance in those big plays to help boost the ceiling just enough um there are several ways to maximize tackle production but nothing being more important than overall playing time just being an every down linebacker staying healthy for a full season will give anyone who fills those requirements a chance to lead the league in tackles um and then the team that the player is on and the defensive scheme that they run play a part as well in generating more tackle efficient opportunities for the linebacker position so typically the more zone heavy a team is the higher tackle efficiency those plays yield for linebackers if you look at a in 2023 his jaguars were on the high end of zone coverage rates at up over 80 percent and were over 60 percent in the previous two seasons um and then lastly the player kind of needs to be above average in tackle efficiency as well and in a case he ranked among the top 96 percentile in tackles versus expected in each of the past three seasons so 
Now the fun task of figuring out who the unexpected contender is going to be to take the crown from Foyer in 2024. Adam, I'll let you start with your dark horse uh, LB1 here for this season. All right. Well, I don't really truly believe this guy's going to take the crown from Foyer. I still, <laughs> you know, it's, that is tough. To do, you know, we've got to give the guy respect. Uh, yeah. But Robert's playing LB23, pretty, pretty nice. 63.4 mm-hmm. overall. And again, this is IDP only. So, yep. um, yeah, linebacker 23. Spillane broke out in 2023, playing 97% of the defensive snaps, piling up 148 tackles, three and a half sacks, and seven TFLs. 77.1 overall PFF grade. That was 15th among 57 qualifying linebackers. 89.0 run defense grade, ranked six. 87.7 pass rush grade, ranked second. He had a tackle rate of 12.8%. But um, yeah, I mean, just love to see it. Great year for Spillane. And they didn't do anything to address the room other than bring in Tommy Eichenberg, who was a fifth round pick. He's not going to be a threat. Uh, unless you know i I think he's like if splain were to leave insurance which is a is a possibility uh splain's in a contract year which i also like but um i kind of think the the raiders like him man you know pierce that was kind of his guy his guy you know when he when he first got his shot and um splain had a breakout season that defense was was a lot of fun played a lot of inspired ball i think that they'll uh they'll try and keep him around but in the short term, I mean, I love him. I mean, he, you can get him as you know a, a late linebacker too, and he's he's gonna he was he finished inside the top twelve last season. Yep. Um, so uh, the ADP doesn't really make sense to me. Um, he's not the sexiest pick, but who cares, right? We're, yep. We don't we're not worried about sexy. Like we just we just want the production, and I think Splane's gonna give you the production. Yeah. And that's the thing, like you said, like it doesn't have to be, you know, the the most notable name to to be the LB one. Like the, I think this is a good pick because we said it right at the top here. Like nothing matters more than playing time, and Spillane immediately checks that playing time box. Right, he's going to wear the green dot again this season. Last year played 1,100 defensive snaps. Like if he's healthy, that will be in the realm of possibilities for him again this year. Um, like you said, finished as LB12 last year, uh, and that was while being like relatively like inefficient as a tackler like 12.7 12.8 percent tackle rate was below average and it led to 16.9 tackles below expected so definitely on the lower end for the for the position so there's definitely like meat left on the bone there with Spillane where if he were to improve his tackle rate while still playing as much as he did in 2023 like he should easily exceed that LB 23 um ADP and yeah like this is the case for most linebackers right but that's why it's not like an easy position to pick out why we all, you know, to pick out these, these potential LB ones. Right. And it's why we also tend to fade the position a little bit more because the production floor um, for full-time guys is so strong that as long as they're out there, we can get, you know, startable fantasy production from them. And I, I think explains a great choice for that. Um, and, and, you know, what this, the same is kind of true for my guy here. Um, being drafted as LB15 at the moment, I, I went with Aziz Alshair uh, of the Houston Texans. He's been kind of a, a personal favorite um, this offseason. I think a lot of people are, are in on uh, Aziz Alshair. I wouldn't be the only one. But he had a strong year in 2023, right? It was his first year as a true full-time starter, delivered 163 total tackles. That was fifth most in the league. And it was in a defense that didn't make it easy on him either. It was a lot more man coverage heavy than than most defenses and he was still able to rank among the top 76 percentile in tackles versus expected um and after ranking above average uh in that regard in each of the past three seasons as well right so um he also ranked uh 99th percentile in tackles versus expected against the run um, which is where most linebacker tackles come from so that allowed him to finish as the overall lb 13 on the year so he was right behind spillane so um this year Al Shair reunites with uh, former defensive coordinator and linebackers coach in San Francisco, D'Amico Ryans, who runs a more zone heavy defense. He did in 2023, and it does project as like a top five defensive scheme for linebacker tackle efficiency. Um, I, when I talked about the uh, 
the defensive scheme article or when I wrote it up, I guess not when I talked about it, but I've talked about it a lot. Um, I wrote up that article for PFF.com and just looking at potential fantasy friendly linebacker schemes for, for defenses. And um, the, the Texans were top five in that regard. And um in 2023, 88% of all Shayer's fantasy production was derived from tackles as well. So potentially some more luck in the big play department, again, thanks to a full-time role. I, I think he should definitely be capable of delivering on potentially his best IDP year yet. Agree. Stud. Um, he is starting to creep up, though, in ADP. Like he's, yeah. I, I, don't know that he's, I don't know that he's going outside like the top. 10 now like he's he's getting up there like you you have to spend like a third or fourth round pick in these idp only best balls now okay. um but still i think that's fair i think that's good i mean that, that's there's value that's value if he ends yeah. up being uh, a top three linebacker which i think he, he definitely has a, a chance at being um and then i mean it's it's even like it even looks better for him now to start the season with christian harris you know being out of the way for a little bit he's on right. ir um we freezing up a little bit we good Oh yeah, we're good. Yeah. Okay. Uh but but yeah, I mean, you know, he's gonna have just Henry two oh two oh two oh two oh two oh next to him for the the first uh, <laughs> the first month. So I mean he could he could even be more productive because I think Christian Harris is that type that could uh steal away some of the big plays and stuff. But um yeah, he's in a great situation. Everything you mentioned, um, we're all pretty excited about Aziz Al Shayer. Yeah. Yeah. I think it makes sense that, yeah, he's not being drafted at LB 15 anymore. Whereas ADP um, says like, I, I've definitely seen him be being drafted within the top 10 now. So probably doesn't qualify as much uh, for, for our, you know, our requirements here for this episode, but um, he's still somebody that I, I like quite a bit. And I, I think has that LB one potential. So I think he could still slip a little bit though. You know, I mean, yeah. it, it, as, as long as you're not just in a, a league full of freaks, like he could, he could, he could fall outside the top 12. Again, there's just a lot of these linebackers in that same range that are, that are uh, really good. Like we're yeah. not a lot of linebackers, you know, like it's, it's definitely a shallow, shallow position, but it's like, you know, there's like 30, like really, really solid options. Um, but yeah. if you know where to, if you just know how to draft, know where the value is going to fall, like you'll, you, you can, you can be okay at linebacker. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of full-time guys out there that we could scoop up late. Uh, you know, the mm -hmm. Denzel Perrimans of the world, as we know. Um, right. You have hundred percent exposure. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just uh, way too much invested in Denzel Perriman. Um, Maybe not though, man. I mean, that's, I, I love doing that stuff. I don't, I'm not a big believer in like the, especially like the way we play, you know, we're not in like tournament type settings. Like mm -hmm. We're in leagues, you know, right. Yeah. Especially like we, you do a lot of these best balls with me, but I mean, I'm 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 fine just like making a bet on a guy like I did that yeah. with with Khalil Mack last year yeah. took him basically in all those leagues and uh, worked out very well for me so yeah. same thing with Denzel Perryman especially like when when he's going where he's at now like because everyone was in on him last year they got burned um, but I mean he's in a better situation now right I mean he's got mm -hmm. just a bunch of young guys around him he's his coach is Harbaugh who you think is is probably gonna love a guy like Denzel Perryman yeah so. Yeah, I, I think uh, I, I I think I might have he might have been a flag plant for me on last year's um, IDP flag plant episode. Nice, but yeah, uh, I think it was just a year early. I, I, I think he I think he's going to do very well this year. So I, I I love I love what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, I, I think he was like he was on my my guys list as well last year. Um, we were so both I'm in on him. Dublin. Both, down. Yeah, we both had like him rank like top twenty four. Yeah, yeah. Talking about that with you. So. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I mean, he got hurt too, right? Like that's that's always part of the risk with him. But yeah, like if he's healthy, like I mean, look, he's wearing the green dot. He's going to be a full time guy. So that immediately clears up one of the issues that was last year um, that kind of took away from his potential. And they, they gave him the captain's patch as well. Um, Dude, um, that's, that is huge. Uh, you know, Harbaugh likes them, like you said. So. Man, if, if he, if he plays, if he can manage to play 80% of the snaps this season, yeah. the dude's going to ball. He'll be yeah. a top 24 yeah. linebacker. Yeah. He's a great tackler. And yeah. What else could we, could we ask for? Just stay healthy. That's it. Any other ones you want to mention? Uh, we did have a little bit of, we had some honorable mentions. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, I I I took them out of the slideshow, but we can definitely I, I'm touch on do, them. If you yeah, just quick. Sure. I, I, I was considering Greg Rousseau. I think he's a good candidate oh, to great. to break out this year. He's going as edge thirty three, defensive line forty one. That's seventy point eight overall. 
But I mean, we've just seen him get better every single year. 14.7% pressure rate in 2023, 14.4 in 2022, 11.6 in 2021 as a rookie. Same thing with the PFF grades, 87.1 this past year overall, 80.9 in 2022, 73.1 in 2021. So uh love love old greg thinks he think yeah. uh think he's gonna have the best year of his career and then also like guys like um law two and verse i think both those guys are, are in a position to get a ton of snaps early mm-hmm. like i'm not going to be surprised if either one of those guys finish inside the top top 12 like i think they i think verse has a chance to, to play 80 percent of the snaps yeah we saw byron yeah. young do it last season you know and he was drafted in the third round so um, same with Law too. Now that Ed Buchanan's gone, I think he's going to get a ton of volume. He was uh, awesome from a PFF standpoint in college, like one of the best you guys have, have ever charted. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I think he's going to do really, really well. So, that would be some of my um, honorable mentions at Edge. Yeah, no, I, I like those picks, I, especially Gregory Rousseau too. Like, he's just been like quietly like improving year after year. Like people kind of forget about him. Right. And, and he's been playing yeah. more too. Like we, we kind of associate the bills as having this rotation um, at the edge, position, which they do, but like, he's also quietly like improved his snap share every season. He's gone from like 49%, 56%, 60% this past year. So like he can get up to that 65, 70% of snap range. Like all his pass rush metrics are really solid. So I I'm with you. I love Greg Rue. So I keep moving him up the ranks as well. I can't remember where I left off on, on him and in, in the rankings, I could actually take a quick peek and he, at he it. He balled in the preseason looked, looked really good in his limited yeah. reps, you know? So yeah. Yeah. yeah he's, top he's one of those DLC. guys that it doesn't seem like it matters much though. Like he, he, he people don't want to embrace him for whatever reason. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I, I think the yeah, I think he's going to be I think he's in for a big year. I think this is definitely going to be his best year yet. So, um, but yeah, I love those. I love those backup picks. I, I mean, the rookies are always going to be fun. Um, I know like Taekwon Lewis is playing ahead of Latu in the preseason, but that's not going to last cares. long. Latu no, looks no. so good, man. Um, but yeah, this it's a uh, it's going to be a fun year, man. I'm uh, I'm excited. This is uh, it's always it's always interesting to see, especially like the rookies and stuff get on get out onto yes. the field, especially early in the year, right? See how these guys perform and what their roles are. So we're close, we're close, less than a week away. But uh, that is going to do it for today. So thank you all so much for listening or watching, um, and feel free, feel free to shout who your dark horse IDP one picks are in the YouTube comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe while you're here. Appreciate you all. Um, Adam, massive thank you to you as well for coming on here, doing this with me a week before the season. I know you guys over at the IDP show are super busy as well and have a lot going on. So please let the good folks know what you guys got cooking this season. Yeah, the IDP show.com. That's where you can find all the work that we do. Um, got a crazy team, huge team now, like over 20 people, you know, helping us out uh, and, and, and grow this thing. So it's it's been a lot of fun. But yeah, we pod every week. There's you can find stuff for us all over the place. I mean, it, it we're uh, we're 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 putting it out there. So we hope you enjoy it. Thanks for thanks for having me, man. Always love getting to, to talk with you. Big fan of you. Think you're the best doing it. You're a big inspiration to all of us. We love you. Oh, man. Get me all teary died. Yeah. I I appreciate it, man. I I can't thank you enough for for giving up uh, your night here and working into the the late evening. So I I can't thank you enough. I, I. I'm a big fan of your work as well and uh, everything you guys are doing at the IDP show. So always love when we get a chance to collaborate and, and do something. And this was fun. I, I will. I look forward to all these guys hitting this year um, yes. and, uh, and having a big season, but yeah, other than that, I mean, as for me, like all my IDP rankings and tiers they're they're going to be updated for those 2024 fantasy drafts as well. Um, again, I know it's a big weekend coming up here, so we'll be able to see, where everyone stands in the rankings uh, after this preseason, those will be live on the site by the time you're listening to this. Um, And then I'll be back next week, previewing week one with Gary Davenport week one IDP rankings will be up as well next week. Um, Got some, my guys articles as well as we head into week one, going to be a great year. So hope you all stay tuned and enjoy the ride. Peace out.